burnout was not in the vernacular and I kept pushing myself. And if any of you listeners have seen my TED talk that not, that now since has gone viral, the stress nearly killed me. That's why we need more women in medicine and women in STEM, bottom line. Like, mm -hmm. let's just come out with a steminist statement right now. Mm -hmm. um, busy I love brain. That. Steminist. Steminist, mm -hmm. yes. I'm Dr. Romy and I identify as a steminist in stilettos. Yes, yes. I love you know? that. And then you get home and you're like, girl, let me just take the edge off and have a glass of wine or three. And if you don't drink, let me have an overpriced supplement I got from some Instagram influencer, that nagging auntie at the back of my brain going, your whole day is going wrong because you didn't get lemon water. Next time you get Uber Eats and you have the lemons delivered to your hotel, KT. Stop working in the Sky Club, Dr. Romy. Look around, there's men all around you. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Alyssa. Hey, Katie. This is episode 231, um, and we have a guest today, yes. and I'm really excited. Um, Dr. Romy, I'm going to just run through a little of your bio, and then I want you to fill in the blanks for us and tell us more about you or, or kind of like what you're doing now, um, but I'll just kind of cover it. So Dr. Romy Mushtaq, did I get that right? Amazing. Pretty yes. Close? Thank you. Okay, awesome. Oh, good. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you, is a distinguished neurologist and creator of the Brain Shift Protocol. Her upcoming book is The Busy Brain Cure, the eight-week plan to find focus, tame anxiety, and sleep again. It's being released, guess what, tomorrow. Because this oh, week... Yeah. It's tomorrow. It's happening. This Happy is very exciting. Day. I'm so glad oh. to celebrate with you. Yeah, very <laughs> exciting. Oh my gosh. So Dr. Romy, you stand as a leading authority in stress management and leadership wellness. And I would love for you to just give us kind of your your quick story and, and let the people know who you are. Yeah. How'd you uh, get here? Oh, Katie, Alyssa, I'm so honored to be with you. You know, my story starts when I was, um, I did everything right that was expected of me from childhood. The success mantra, I don't know, did your parents know you were both going to become entrepreneurs and real estate agents? What Was that kind of just ingrained? Okay, uh, my Asian mama drama and, and dad strong ally, it was like I was birthed out of the womb as a disruptor. And my mom and dad told me, like, we have one daughter and you will become a doctor. <laughs> and that was it. Love. Like my first toy, like I'm loving that Barbie is trending. My first toy was not a Barbie. It was a Fisher Price stethoscope. And I loved it. I like young student athletes are trained to, you know, excel in sports. I was trained in STEM as a child. And I entered neurology at a time where less than 5% of the brain doctors in the United States were women. And my early career started researching, I was not only seeing patients, but researching the effect of women's hormones on women's brains and how it affected um, epilepsy and migraines. And I loved my job, just like I know the both of you love your job, but yeah. I was like seriously struggling. And back in those days, it was not safe. It was not civil. It was not even politically correct. It was the end of your career if you admitted I think something's going on with my mental health. Burnout was not in the vernacular and I kept pushing myself. And if any of you listeners have seen my TED talk that, not, that now since has gone viral, the stress nearly killed me and I should have known better. I am a brain doctor and I was sitting in life-saving, had life-saving surgery in 2010. And when I was sitting in the hospital, y'all, I remember thinking, there ain't no life skill that my aunties and my elders taught me that are going to get me through this. And nothing I learned in medical school is going to help me now. Like, what do I do? And that's how this journey started. Because it turns out, uh, and I know you all in real estate, I looked up the statistics before we got in the show, like burnout is not the way to hustle. And um, I've been researching it now in corporate wellness. So I get hired now as a keynote speaker. Um, and also serve as a chief wellness officer for a company of over 7,000 people. So that's given me the world's most fascinating lab to research and observe people as they hustle and how to avoid burnout and heal it if needed. 
Mm. Wild. You do you still have a medical practice, or you're fully focused on the research and and speaking yeah. at this point? At the yeah, at this point, I'm running my company, the Brain Shift Institute. I'm still licensed and boarded as a doctor, but in 2018, when Evolution Hospitality named me their chief wellness officer, um, I tried and knew I couldn't see patients one on one in the outpatient clinic. Here, that job has me traveling all over the United States, meeting our associates that are in hotels all over the United States and Canada, then that grew and was successful. So other Fortune 500 companies started to hire me to speak going, how did you do what you did at that company? And how can we do it here? So um, I have a travel boyfriend and his name is Delta Airlines. <laughs> I love it. That's so funny. What a, what, a great, what a great travel boyfriend. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Will you talk to us about Busy Brain? I love the name of your book. It mm-hmm. feels like something that I would intuitively pick up off a shelf and yes. be like, oh, Busy oh. Brain Cure. I need this. I yes. will give you a small backstory. You know, Tell both me. of my children are diagnosed ADHD inattentive mm-hmm. type. And I thought, mm-hmm. where, you know, where could this have come from? And then I was like, oh, it's <laughs> your girl. Yeah. Like oh. I was just an undiagnosed high performer, yeah. straight A student. But, yeah. you know, now that I know all the little signposts, mm-hmm. um, I know it was me. And I find oh. it very so busy brain and anything that has to do with like getting an, an overactive brain, I'm fascinated by yeah, and definitely want to hear like the, the tips. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's talk about what is busy brain. Can you, yeah. can you explain that to let's us? Let's chat. For, first, I just want to double click on something you said. It's so important. And so many women, especially as first are just our age groups and girls tend not to get the excellent medical care even today, let alone when we were all growing up. And I know I'm an auntie compared to my, my young sisters here, Katie and Alyssa, but you know, we didn't get the same attention. We were just written off as you're a good girl because you're getting straight A's or you're a bad girl because you're not behaving well. And it's really devastating. And so I'm, you know, I'm sorry on behalf of the medical system, it got missed. And that's why we need more women in medicine and women in STEM, bottom line. Like, mm-hmm. let's just come out with a STEMinist statement right now. Mm-hmm. Um, busy I love brain. That. STEMinist. STEMinist. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm Dr. Romy and I identify as a STEMinist in stilettos. Yes. Yeah. I love you know? that. We are so excited to welcome Dr. Romy Mushtaq to the podcast this week. Dr. Romy is teaching us what it means to have a busy brain and how we can use her brain shift protocol to tame it. You're going to hear us talk a lot about boundaries and self-care in this episode and the importance of finding a like-minded community. If you've been searching for the right group of agents to support you in your career, then look no further than the Hustle Humbly community. You can learn more and join us at hustlehumblypodcast.com slash membership, or just go to the link in the show notes. We'd love to be a part of your brain shift. Now let's get into this transformational discussion with Dr. Romy Mushtaq. Yes. And, but what I want to talk about the busy brain is this is not about um, adults as yourself, Katie, that may have had a misdiagnosis of ADD or ADHD in childhood. When I started my career track in neurology back in the 1990s, we did not recognize adult onset ADD or ADHD. You look at the medical literature now and the research I've done, it is real because of our lifestyles of being hyper-connected and stressed out all the time. So busy brain means this. And then we're going to kind of go over a story of, is this how you both are in your amazing real estate businesses and some of your colleagues that are listening, but busy brain is a triad of symptoms that you have adult onset ADD or ADHD, anxiety, or feeling anxious And then no matter what you do, you can't fall asleep at night because you have racing thoughts um, in your brain or you fall asleep, but you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to bed. That's a busy brain. I'm as a doctor. I say this to everyone that's going to grab the book, get a copy for your therapist or your doctor is we in neurology and psychiatry and psychology got it wrong that ADD anxiety and insomnia are not three different diseases. It's one pattern of neuroinflammation in the brain that's leading to all these symptoms from our chronically stressed out lives. And I'm here with the solution. So that sounded really clinical, does it? Yeah. Do you want me to break it down more? What do y'all think? I don't, I don't, 
feel like it was too clinical for us. Our listeners are pretty yeah. on top of it. And I feel yeah. like um, it is kind of a good point. This is being talked about more. I feel mm -hmm. like a, a lot of people are, are following these type of accounts, uh, you know, of doctors or of experts mm -hmm. or someone who is explaining, well, why do I do the things I do? Or why do I feel the way I feel? Or where are other women that can help me understand what's yeah. going on with me as a woman? So um, I think I think it was pretty clear. Did you have any questions? No, I think that was a great explanation of it. Okay, yeah. so are there industries that are prone to busy brain? Like when you started yeah. digging into our little realtor life, how yeah. did you feel about that? Well, let's talk about how we are prone to busy brain when we look at the data that comes from the American Psychological Association and my data that I researched for this book. So so we'll put a free link for your listeners. We have something known as the busy brain test and you can get your brain score. And I forgot to send it to you all before this podcast to get your brain scores, but you can always reach out to your Dr. Oh, Auntie Romy afterwards and let me know. So we, will. we had 17,000 adults between December, 2020 and December of 2022. So in a two year period, go through this. And we found that 82% of people scored above a 30. That means you have the effect of chronic stress and potentially burnout in your brain, what we call a busy brain. And that's where we looked at it. So when you look at our certain industries prone, we know what industries are more prone to burnout, unfortunately, and very sadly, our teachers from K through 12 are at the top of the list. Then first line responders and healthcare workers, um, other uh, people that rate really high are meeting planners, lawyers, um, but here's the thing we found. We did not see a difference in industry when we looked at the companies because I speak to every industry in the United States and globally. So overall, we didn't see a difference between healthcare, tech, finance, insurance. What we do know is I wondered about real estate because I know my process of selling and buying a house Y'all were mm -hmm. working hard for me in the evenings after my work day or on the weekends or early mornings because we got to get the house and it's an insane market here in Florida. And it was like a 6 a.m. call like, oh, my God, did they look at my bid? Like, you know, yes. And does that resonate? You tell me, help me to understand the ske work schedules of you both and the people you serve in your community. So I do a lot of volume. Um, I'm a high producing realtor and I do feel like I am more efficient when busy. You yes. know, like if I have two things on the list, it's going to take me forever. But if I have 25 things, I can knock it out in a day. Amazing. When I first started real estate, um, I was not married yet. I was just engaged and we, you know, didn't have kids and we both loved our jobs so much. Mm -hmm. So we were just, I had no boundaries and I loved it. Like I was just, I, I just was fueled by the more that I could do. And I think because in real estate, you are rewarded for your work. Mm -hmm. If you would like to make more money, you can continue working these hours and you can continue accommodating as many people as you want. And it wasn't until six years in and I had my daughter and I was, you know, feeling like my career was going to be over. I was so afraid, mm -hmm. like I was excited, but I just had this fear of losing my career and wondering how I was going to continue at my level. But it was the first time that I had to have boundaries because I actually had no choice. And it was amazing. Like it was the first time that I had to tell people, I'm so sorry, I can't do it right now, but I can do it in four weeks or, and people were like, oh, okay, that's wonderful. And it just was like a light bulb moment for me to understand that people will wait and the ones that won't, you probably don't want to work with them as clients Girl, and that's truth. okay. Truth. Like that's okay. Preach, preach. So, it was so funny because my daughter was born in February of 2017 and 2017 was like my record year. Congratulations. And it didn't feel bad. It felt really yeah. good. It yes. was like, 
the most I had ever done, but the mm -hmm. most at peace I had ever felt because I was actually shutting it off at a certain time. And so oh, that's I a was brain just shift. surprised. Yeah, yes. I was surprised, you know, yes, very surprised. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm going to interject here for you to have some context, Dr. Romy. Our podcast talks a lot about boundaries I, and I you know, heard. Having professional yes. standards and things that are yes. not commonplace necessarily in the in the larger Overall picture industry. Career. Okay. Right. So we're, we're fighting against it. We're fighting against it. Well, mm -hmm. I get, thank you for the context, Katie and Alyssa. I think you just elicited the before, which is a busy brain and the after of what happens when you brain shift and set boundaries, not only in your time, but in your brain. And, you know, let's talk about that is when we have a busy brain. So if you're, you know, listeners take the test and your score is above a 30 Everything feels like an emergency read on your calendar. You have to take care of it now. A client just emailed or texted. You have to do it now. Like you said, right? Rather than being able to prioritize and you all have amazing podcasts on boundaries. I want to dig a little deeper. It's when people have a busy brain, that chronic stress of, you know, you feel good, that dopamine high when you check off another thing on your to-do list or you knock out another email or you write another proposal, you get another thing on the MLS, whatever it is, but then that's a high and then you come crashing down and you think I have to keep doing more. So that's can be a busy brain. How do you know you have it? Mm. Because you get up in the morning and you're like, girl, don't talk to me until I have a venti latte with oat milk. And if the barista put in whole milk, I'm going to be B with the capital, <laughs> like bitter all day long, like, mm, mm, right. And then you go and you have multiple browser windows open on your brain. So somebody just heard you say, Alyssa, that I've got 25 clients and I can knock it out. They're like, oh my God, I've got 25 browser windows open. And how do I do this checklist? And something that takes you two minutes now is taking you two hours and your to-do list is multiplying and you're getting really anxious and you keep using Using caffeine or maybe Adderall and Ritalin, but you really don't maybe have a clear diagnosis of ADD or ADHD like your children, Katie. And then you get home and you're like, girl, let me just take the edge off and have a glass of wine or three. And if you don't drink, let me have an overpriced supplement I got from some Instagram influencer. And then you put your head down on the pillow and there's 72 warring conversations going on. And you're paranoid. Did you sign that last important contract? But you can't stop obsessing over, oh my God, my eyeliner was like running down my face during this interview with Katie and Alyssa. That's a busy brain, right? That is a busy brain. Yes. Yeah. And nobody can be effective. You know, the three of us are sitting from a point of wisdom and knowledge and street skills and having learned from professionals how to set boundaries and et cetera, and we're successful in our businesses. But I once had a busy brain, so I have sympathy, you know? I feel and like I still have days of busy brain. Like yes. they're not all perfect. No, no, they're not. But one thing you said, Alyssa, that's key, the busy brain cure, and we'll get into that in a second, is actually teaching micro habits or brain shifts to help your brain and body set boundaries. So when I had all this data of 17,000 people were sitting in the pandemic and my boyfriend Delta Airlines and I weren't seeing each other. So I had time on my hands and I'm kind of a geek girl and Netflix there wasn't really doing it for me. So I dipped into the psycho neuroimmunoendocrinology literature and I was like, medically, how can we make this easy for people to do in our full lives, not busy lives, full and productive lives without having to go on another diet. What are the scientific? And then we put a thousand executives through it and tested it and honed the protocol. And you said something so key, Alyssa, is that in the seven day sleep challenge in chapter 11 of the book is you set a time to stop working and you set a time to go to bed and you set a time to get up in the morning to the best of your ability for all the mamas listening who got small children and or all the single men and women with children, you know, but to the best of your ability. And that's key. Mm, fascinating. Very fascinating. Very fascinating. Okay. When you said that, like how you said, not every day is perfect. I was kind Girl, of wondering, yes. like yes. imposter syndrome too, you know, mm -hmm. for example, I teach mm -hmm. an email class to mm -hmm. help at our offices, like locally, yeah. just to help yeah. realtors keep a tidy email to keep nice. a tidy brain, you know, like yes. I feel like if email yes. is clean, your brain can be clean. Yeah. Um, but then on the days when my email is out of control, 
Uh -huh. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, you're a fraud. I'm a fraud. You know, oh, I mean, yeah. when you have a stressful day, like when you are just, yeah. how do you regroup? How yeah. do you, how Let, do you reset? Let's, reset? let's talk about yeah. that. So, so one, I'm going to say a few things that you both can push back on me, but I'm here as a brain doctor and a fellow sister, successful entrepreneur to say, you don't need another time management technique or productivity tool. You're allowing the state of your email to dictate your mood and how you feel about yourself. That's what happens when we have a busy brain and you're going to have fun throughout my book and all the listeners. When I have a busy brain, you say it elegantly, Alyssa, imposter syndrome sets in girl. I get the voice of my judgmental Indian aunties in my brain and they are just nagging, 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 nagging. And, blah, blah, blah. and, and really as a whole, we see this in men and women, but especially women, when you have a busy brain and that neuroinflammation kicks in, that's when things like low confidence, imposter Imposter syndrome, inability to task, uh, unitask or quick shift, all of that starts to happen. I'm here as the brain doctor to say, can I invite you to go back one step behind? And before you say, oh, I need another time management technique or productivity tool, I'm saying, my sisters, can we take care of our brains mm -hmm. and let's brain shift? And that's what I want to be here. So that whatever systems y'all are teaching, which are brilliant for realtors to put into place, they can execute. And listen, we all have our less than perfect, imperfect days. And it it means I'm not going to hear the voices of the judgment. Jill Indian aunties going, no wonder you can't find a second husband, Romy. You can't even manage your email inbox. That's what happens when I have a bad day and I have a busy brain. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my god. So funny. Okay, can you talk to us about the physical health implications? Like give us some mm -hmm. like signposts of like, well wait, maybe it is burnout. Yeah. Maybe I am like at the edge. Can you tell us what to look for? Absolutely. So people are going to take that test. You score above a 30. And I talk about it in chapter one of the book. I got a tour of Delta Airlines operations at Atlanta Hartsfield Airport that your busy brain it is like an airport traffic control tower. So it's not just about your brain and not focusing, but like a global airspace, Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson Airport, you can get a direct flight to y'all in Louisiana or to me in Orlando, or you can get a direct flight to London, you know, and that's the way the brain works. There are connections to the rest of our brain for sleep and our memory and our mood, but also to our hormones and to our digestion and to our lungs and to our immune system. So if all of a sudden you're getting more stressed and you're like, I went to the doctor, where in God's green earth did this come from that now I got high blood pressure all of a sudden or sugar diabetes, or I have tried every freaking last cleanse and I can't lose that last seven or 17 pounds. That could be a busy brain. So the symptoms can vary. And you, I, that's why I tell my story so openly in the book is I was pushing myself through sleepless nights, sustaining on caffeine, wine, and chocolate, and it wasn't serving me. And I started to have chest pain and really serious digestive issues. And it turned out it wasn't your run of the mill acid reflux disease, but achalasia with precancerous lesions that needed urgent emergent surgery, right? And that is it. And in chapters 10 through 17, you read the stories of amazing executives who went through the brain shift protocol, who are hotel general managers, tech executives, doctors, uh, principals of schools that did the same thing and their symptoms vary. Um, and that's what happens is you, we know that 90% of the reason you go to the doctor or you're avoiding the doctor and you're looking on TikTok instead has to do because you have a busy brain. And so my job is to say, let's get down to the root cause and clean up what the busy brain center has made a mess of so that you can go back and be amazing, successful real estate agents with your full lives outside of work. So you come out of this surgery and you're yeah. like, something has to change. And mm -hmm. you have this knowledge because you are a doctor and this is what you have studied. So knowing what you knew and also yeah. coming out of what just happened to you, yeah. what did the beginning of the brain shift protocol, like how did you know 
yeah. where to start the foundation of this coming yeah. out of it. Thank you. You know, in chapters five through nine, you read the leadership stories of all the male allies that came along. I didn't wake up out of surgery and have this answer. Let's be real. Because mm-hmm. if some listener is listening out there and they're like, oh, Katie, Alyssa, I've been in that dark hole that Dr. Romy's in. Can I be real? It took me about 18 months to get out of it. And you read in chapter five that I'm sitting in Cambodia with the monks learning mindfulness and meditation. And that was the start. And that was why my TED talk went viral. I started to teach companies how to meditate for stress relief. And then people were coming with the busy brain symptoms saying, wait, Dr. Romy, I need something more. And so I piecemealed it together over eight years, healing my own busy brain, and then came up with the protocol. So brain shift is an acronym, the shift. And I'm going to go through the five key categories. S Mm -hmm. is sleep, your circadian rhythm and shift. H is hormones that need to be assessed and corrected. I is markers of inflammation, like vitamin D as in dog, D3. F is how you fuel yourself using food without going on a diet. And T is the role of technology. And this is an eight-week plan that is in chapters 10 through 18, we micro, we have, we stack the habits on upon one another, like little dominoes and ding, you go, you start with one micro habit and then that, and everything just starts to calm down in a busy brain. And that's the beauty of it. And we save lives every time we go through the eight week protocol in companies, and now we're releasing it to the public. And so that is kind of the overview of how that journey happened. I, I feel like I had to figure out my mess so I could help you with yours. And we all got mess. We all got mess. Absolutely. I want to talk about the micro habits. We read Atomic Habits and I actually have a whole episode about it. And we love the habit stacking. We love everything that is Atomic Habits. But those micro habits that I think when... January 1st just happened, right? So people are like, I'm going to change everything. I'm going to do it all up. I mean, now it's the 8th as we air, and I'm sure they're like, I've already failed. I give up. This year is a wash, whatever. I noticed because you had a post about hydration, and I picked up a micro habit mid-January last year, not January 1st, but somewhere in the middle, my broker said, hey, um, what really helped me is a glass of hot lemon water every morning. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, that. I'm going to start doing that. It is the tiniest little micro habit, right? Yeah. I have never been a coffee drinker or like a routine must have this in the morning type of person. I haven't missed a single day of lemon water. Amazing. It'll now be an entire year. And it's like, Every morning, I'm like, I can't wait for my lemon water, right? Because I think my brain is like, this is something we like, right? So when you pick the right habits, I almost feel like your body will just push you towards them. Yes, Mm -hmm. it is. And my aunties are clapping for you from heaven right now with their cups of chai because the idea of lemon water came from Ayurveda, an ancient uh, medicine, uh, the most ancient medicine in the world, and also then in traditional Chinese medicine. And it's really beneficial for most people, not, you know, one isn't. My job for the busy brain was what particular micro habits will help a busy brain that will Mm -hmm. calm down the anxiety, help you focus get to the root cause of uh, ADD or ADHD for adults and help you sleep. So I looked specifically at those micro habits. So yes, my book was based on both Atomic Habits and BJ Fogg's Tiny Habits. So you read those, but then think of this book as your roadmap of which micro habits to do to get from point A to point Z to calm a busy brain. And we tested them for you. And so that it's not disrupting your life as um, a mother, a father, as a powerhouse real estate broker. That's what we researched. Mm. It's so funny because we just went to Anaheim, California for a real estate conference. And one of the mornings we were kind of rushed and we stopped at this cafe to have breakfast and apparently so did everybody else. And it was, we were just rushing and, you know, Katie did not want to eat until she got her hot lemon water. And it was like a big deal. Okay. And I'm like, yes, it is. I know know that this is a thing for her, you know, but I Mm -hmm. didn't realize Mm-hmm. She's not going to eat breakfast if she doesn't get her lemon water. So yeah. I'm like, listen, waitress, I need hot lemon water. Must have water. She now. must have it if yes. you want her to eat her breakfast. So they yeah. brought it. But then afterwards, she was like, if I would have missed, I would have broken my streak. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I I love a streak. 
So Girl, yes, I, yes, you know, yes. I, I had trouble at first, like, why is this so important <laughs> to not, it's one day, but then it yeah. was like, she's not giving up on that. Like well, this is her here's thing. The thing. It, it is, it's, it's a streak. It's a ritual, which our mm-hmm. lives need. So mm-hmm. not only does it have the physical benefits of that hot lemon water that you're doing every morning, it's a ritual that your brain, your circadian brain, your busy brain center is now used to it. And mm-hmm. it's yeah. setting off your day in the positive direction. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, my ritual is to get up and, drag my poor dog in my pajamas. I'm on an eight floor of a condo outside before we have an accident inside. He's 16, almost 17 years old. And then coming up to pray and meditate. And mm-hmm. when my day is off, because I'm in a hotel room and hair and makeup arrived at 4 a.m. because I have 6 a.m. call time or tech time for the stage, you know, I had to learn. That means I'm going to get up at 3 a.m. to pray and meditate. Because mm-hmm. it is my ritual and my circadian rhythm needs this. Or yes, everything really is off psychologically mm-hmm. and spiritually for you for the day. Mm-hmm. And now the three of us are strong and resilient people. We recover. But it's always that nagging auntie at the back of my brain going, your whole day is going wrong because you didn't get lemon water. Next mm-hmm. time you get Uber <laughs> Eats and you have the lemons <laughs> delivered to your hotel, Katie. Yes. Yes. So funny. So true. Uh, Okay. You are creating these cultures of wellness in big companies. Okay. But realtors work alone a lot of the times. Mm. So how do we create this culture of wellness when we're maybe just a company of one, like we're just the one person? How do we hold ourselves accountable to that? What can we do practically to make that I guess, stick. Mm, I love that question. You know, that's why we released the protocol to the public because, you know, my job is to work with teams, whether it's a team of five or a team of 50,000 and help foster a culture of wellness. This idea that a workplace culture, whether you're one or you're a company of 10,000 is not based on your to-do list and your bottom line and your sales goal. All those things are important, but it's how well am I? And so number one, a culture of wellness starts with me, the leader, Maya, the individual. Now, if you're a party of one, a solo entrepreneur, I think this is why I love your Hustle Humbly podcast and the entire community you've created. And this is the one thing I will just say to the collective conscious sisterhood as a woman leader who advocates for women from kindergarten to the C-suite is if you're one big brain shift this year is to find a community of like-minded individuals. That is the one thing we want you to do. And don't go this journey alone. And hey, if you want to join Katie, Alyssa, and I, because the book comes out tomorrow and we're going to be starting in our global brain shift community, we will happily invite the Hustle Humbly community to come and join me weekly for the micro habits so that you're doing it. It was really interesting, Katie, because we found this and Alyssa was, I do this for teams and teams, the CEO and the CHRO of teams would be like 10 days, 14 days into the protocol. They're like, why is everybody happier? Like what's happening? And everyone's saying, oh, it's brain shift at AIG. It's brain shift at Google. And they were like, and then they would join and they would see because the first two weeks of the protocol, we restore your circadian rhythm and make you prioritize your sleep. If that's the only thing you do, you're setting yourself up for success and you feel better. Mm -hmm. Then we ran this in my community and we found that we got great results. But, you know, I spent most of my time and so did my health coaches and team making people feel like they were a part of a community because these were strangers from all over the world. And so that's the key is whatever you want to do, don't go the journey alone. And by the way, the medical and psychology literature supports this is social isolation is the number one root cause between of women getting breast cancer, women having depression, women getting heart attacks and stroke. Yes, we hear all about weight and all these things, but it's the social isolation. So Katie, Alyssa, I am cheering you on. I want you to like grow your community by leaps and bounds and do more virtual or in-person events and everything you all are doing because it's fostering a community. And that in that, before you go to your email lessons, Alyssa, is have a brain shift of the week of what am I doing for my brain and body 
And what am I inviting you to do? And if you don't know where to go, that's why we have chapters 10 through 17. There's a micro habit every single week for you to pick. That's amazing. That is amazing. How many weeks do the micro habits go? Is it eight? It's eight weeks. And in eight weeks, people get to the root cause of their chronic stress or burnout. They are feeling better. Our data shows the number one improvement we got was in people's sleep and improved sleep and lowered anxiety. But here's the thing. Weeks four through eight of the protocol are focused on how you're fueling yourself. And we don't put anyone on a diet. We allow comfort food. And people by the end of the eight weeks, if they've stuck to the micro habits to the best of their ability while eating comfort food and having comfort food breaks, are now um, the the belly and the brain bloating is down. So they've lost a dress or a pant size or two Mm -hmm. and their blood sugars have stabilized. And, and like I said, you don't go on a diet because I'm a chief wellness officer in a global institution. My job as Dr. Auntie Romy is to make sure that the vegans and the paleo and the carb lovers and the chocoholics can all sit at one table and feel like they belong. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that that is so important too, because there's so many, um, so many of the messages out there are so it's this way or the highway. Right. And I I loathe that. I'm like, I can be such an overthinker, you know, and after I finished nursing my second kid, I, I just this year went and had like a whole panel done. I found like a functional wellness doctor that like would check all the things, you know, And I felt really good about it. The consultation was so good. And we're like tweaking a few things that make so much sense. Right. Yes. And that that goes, yeah. (sighs) Did you find something that helped you in those labs? Yes, I totally did. There was a few things like. After, so with my son, I had like crazy, I've, I've always had super low blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Like when I go to the doctor, they joke, like, are you alive? Because this happens to me too. Yeah. It's so low. It's just, Both I've, I've been that uh-huh. way like my whole life. Yeah. So, yeah. but after my son, I couldn't even leave the hospital because my blood pressure was so high oh my gosh, and like we so couldn't nice. get it down. So yeah. it was like crazy because the baby got discharged, but I had to stay. And my husband was like, no, 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 no. She comes, she, she comes where the baby goes. <laughs> like I'm yes. going to be home with this baby and the oh. toddler. So anyways, it was just, I was just trying to like get back to yeah. a yeah, getting to and the so root there was cause. A few, yeah, so there was a few like little thyroid things. There was a few little progesterone things. Yes. And I learned I'm a little so bit about. I'm so glad you brought it up. Thank you. It was fascinating. That is fascinating. chapter six in the book and chapter seven. And thank you for bringing it up because I wanted to be a nosy Indian on tea because you have so many female listeners. You read my story and my tragic journey of infertility and the doctor's not listening to me. I'm a doctor and I knew for a decade something is wrong with my thyroid. And no, we got your TSH. We have the lab slip for you in chapter 17 and in the digital materials that go along with the book. And guess what, Alyssa, your listeners don't have to pay the hundreds and thousands of dollars to go to an integrative functional medicine doctor like me. Most of these labs are covered by U.S. insurance providers. Mm -hmm. We design that and we have a partnership with Rupa Health on my website as well. And they do take a lot of the major insurances and can work with that as well in most states in the United States so that a full thyroid panel gets listened. So, you know, we're talking about all these symptoms. You're under chronic stress. It throws off your busy brain and circadian rhythm. The One of the biggest areas that throws women off if you're gender assigned female at birth is your thyroid gland. One One in eight women in the United States has subclinical thyroid disease. It could be too low, too high, or both autoimmune, and it's getting missed by traditional labs and traditional primary care doctors. And please, Alyssa, help me and Katie get this out to your listeners. And by the way, if you're like me and you've got melanin in your skin, you're a woman of color, it's one in four women in the United States have this issue. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all, we could be saving lives. People are like doing another cleanse and they're failing in January and they're like, I haven't even lost a pound and I'm starving. Y'all go get your thyroid check. And you just heard my sister, Alyssa, she is like talking about it absolutely after pregnancy and having a baby or multiple babies is the most vulnerable time for the thyroid gland for a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it was like, I was feeling so good. And I was talking to 
a trainer, like a personal trainer and like super excited to share. And they're just kind of like, oh, you know, like be careful. You know, if you start taking a supplement, then your body will shut down and not make it ever again for you. And I'm just like, oh, it's like you're trying to do the right thing. And the messages out there yeah, it's, are so it's confusing. So hard. And, it's and so that's hard. kind of, you know, the health and wellness industry has run amok that way. It'll give you a busy brain because everybody has a judgment. And, um, you know, I know the healthcare system has lost confidence in in, in America, rightfully so. And I just want to say this is find somebody that has licensed credentials for functional or integrative medicine. We give you the science in this book. You know, we mm -hmm. break it out. You can go get labs. And yes, sometimes supplements are needed, but one supplement doesn't help everybody. It's mm -hmm. tailored to your symptoms, tailored to your labs. And, you know, here's my thinking is I need to be on my thyroid medicine likely for the rest of my life. But I am turning 50 next year and I am more cognitively sharp and productive today as an entrepreneur with a rapidly scaling business than when I was 25 and had just graduated medical school. And so you look amazing. No thank doubt. You, yeah, I'm like, thank you. Thank what? you. Yeah. You look amazing. <laughs> and 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 that's it because I practice brain shift. And so if I have to be on a medication, I use bioidentical hormones, or if I have to be on supplements then so be it because I am living my best life with joy. And I want every one of your listeners to go back to that place of joy and your mm -hmm. hope and everything you want for your businesses. And just like how you said, like in the medical world, trying to do this on my wellness journey, I felt like that was giving me a busier brain than my work yeah, was because absolutely. I was like, yeah, over investigating and over researching and just trying to make sure I'm doing the right thing, you know, and it's, yeah. it's funny, because I feel like we always say that in real estate, there's so many shiny objects, like if you need to sell something, sell it to a realtor, because they're going to be like, I need that so that my business will be better. You know, uh, we have so many shiny objects in real estate. Uh, I, I, I think that's all entrepreneurs. <gasps> I call it the shiny entrepreneurial project syndrome, right? <laughs> yeah. That yeah. there's always a new shiny project, whether it's for yourself, for your business, but that can be, again, a sign of a busy brain where, you know, you, you should have goals set for your business. You should have talked to your CPA, you know, you, you should be looking at your projections. You should be looking at what are the business tasks I need to do to bring in revenue. When we have a busy brain, all of a sudden it's like squirrel. Oh, I love Katie and Alyssa's podcast. I'm going to start a podcast and then I'll, I'll, you know, make $10 million in revenue. You both know it doesn't work that way, you know? No. And, and so do I in the health and as a health and wellness entrepreneur. And when you brain shift, you take care of your brain and all of a sudden everything is logical again and you can follow your operational plan, your strategic plan, your marketing plan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in real estate too, just like you're like squirrel, it's like we have we have always believed like full time realtors is the best way to be a professional realtor that gives sound, solid advice that can be trusted. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's sort of like, you don't want a part-time financial advisor, you know, Agreed. like you want, yeah. you want someone that can help you, but realtors love a side hustle, you know, and especially uh, as things have mm. shifted and the market has mm -hmm. slowed down, I'm mm -hmm. seeing it everywhere. So mm. many realtors are chasing all these things and I feel like sometimes it can lead to chasing pennies when if mm. you actually just focus where you know you're good, you could have dollars. And yes, so, yes. But and, it, and that's a busy so brain. A, a busy brain is going to make you want to do a get rich quick scheme. Oh, I can launch a course yes. and make millions, right? And then Facebook and Instagram are going to start feeding you ads of people saying, oh, launch a course and make six figures in one month, you know? And yeah, that's right. not how it works. I mean, I am telling you that, and you both know this too, it's I've lived a life of education and excellence as have both of you to succeed as a doctor, to succeed as a professional speaker, to succeed as a chief wellness officer. And yes, there were always shiny objects along the way. And anytime I saw a revenue dip, it was because I lost focus and a busy brain will do that to you. And, you know, when you brain shift, you're much more thoughtful. So yes, if the market is down and your heart is really saying, I need to go another direction, you're going to actually make a educated 
and sound business decision of maybe I can go teach school part time because I need X amount of revenue per month and I enjoy teaching, you know, Mm -hmm. rather than chasing the next shiny object. But it starts with your busy brain as a foundation and then, Mm -hmm. you know, weigh your options carefully with someone that will give you advice like you all have created in this community. So, yeah, absolutely. It sounds to me like the busy brain is when you just have that full reactive. Everything you do is reactive. You're just kind of chasing the next thing. It's hard to stay consistent. Everything is an emergency. Uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your email inbox is never clean. You're chasing the next exciting project, dopamine high, um, chasing the next uh, sale, uh, you know, clearance rack at TJ Maxx. Oops, that's my aunties. Maybe not the two of you, but you know, that's a busy brain, you know? Mm -hmm. And 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 that's like, you know, take the test and we've given mm-hmm. you micro habits. We have the labs. You've heard Alyssa give a testimony to that, you know, um, even long before she met me, she was on this journey. So I I want to see more women entrepreneurs succeed. Mm-hmm. You both know this and it's true in real estate. Less than 2% of female entrepreneurs will cross a million dollars in revenue. And I know those numbers are scaled in real estate because of the home prices, but it's just kind of like this is if I told you all that I was ready to sell my condo and I'm going to do for sale by owner, what would everyone listening to your podcast do right now? Mm-hmm. Like, eh. right. Yeah. <laughs> they, would, they would have some words for you, Dr. <laughs> they, they would. And, and absolutely. And so it's the same thing when you're like, hey, I'm going to go back on TikTok or I'm going to listen to that personal trainer. That's like, stop this medical regimen. You're going to be on these supplements forever. That's mm-hmm. like me saying I'm going to put my condo on sale by owner. I might, if I'm lucky, get it right. But you all know it's going to take three times as long, lots of legal mistakes, and I'm definitely not going to get the best price. And it's going to be an awful experience for the buyer. And it's going to take me away from what's important to me, which is scaling my mission to improve, you know, brain health and burnout for, um, you know, individuals and teams that are out there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, why should I be distracting myself for by sale by owner, right? When there's Mm -hmm. a professional realtor out there that can help me and do it professionally. It's the same way with your brain, y'all. Like, don't let TikTok guide you on your health journey for 2024. Right. I think that is so great. And it kind of goes back to something you said in the very beginning of this is that we have so much access now to everything and we are so hyper connected. Mm -hmm. Like we know more about what's going on in every place in the whole world and like every crime that has ever been committed and every wellness tip and pro and con. And even in real estate, it's like everyone has a different opinion. And I Mm. think that it is so hard to drown out the noise because of how accessible it is. Agreed. But in Brain Shift, you'll see in week three, we talk about digital detox and taking a brain pause during the day from mm. the digital devices. Um, I ask my executives, if you need to keep up on the real estate news, on financial news, schedule that during the day. Schedule a break to go on your favorite social media channel just to scroll, but schedule it, right? And mm-hmm. to, to your point of boundaries, But here's the thing that happens. You'll read the story of Kevin and how I close my book. I always ask, what is it that you hope for? Hope is anchored in your deep knowing, your desire, not somebody on social media telling you, Katie, Alyssa, you need this. Dr. Romy, buy that. Mm -hmm. What is it you really, really hope for? And when you look at that for your personal health and for your business, then you start to create the smart goals or whatever your system is that's in aligned with that. And whatever distraction comes along from a busybody auntie or social media, you'll just be like, no, thank you. My, I, I don't need a busy brain. I'm focused, right? So can I tell you what my hope is? For please, that? Yeah, please. Um, I'm hoping I've dedicated this past decade to building this business and being a chief wellness officer and researching this book. I hope to have a second chance at love and that my on this journey of launching this book globally, that I meet my life partner. And so if that's my hope and my goal, 
I'm not going to allow myself on social media to get distracted by the people going, there's a reason when women turn 50, you have a one in 20 chance of finding a man. You're going to get hit by lightning instead. I'm going to be like, no, thank oh, you. that's not what my busy brain needs. Right. Yeah. Right. And it unfollow. is unfollow. Right, unfollow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Unfollow. Yes. And, and that's it. And, and then when I have moments that I don't feel so hopeful, I'll ask both you, Katie and Alyssa, will you remember me and be like, we're going to be Dr. Romy's hope holders that she finds the I life part that. of her dreams, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. What it. what hope can I hold for both of you in 2024 for personally oh, or professionally? She really put us on the this spot. Is deep. I know this is we're deep. deep thinkers. We are. Yeah. Hmm. Do you know what your hope is? She's going to hold it for you. I'm like, this it's is- so funny because I told Katie, I feel like, you know, I have a, I have a two year old and a six year old. So I feel like I've just been in the trenches for a yes, minute. Yeah. Yeah. And like when her kids are home from school and they make their own sandwiches and stuff and go for a walk in the neighborhood alone, I'm like, how much longer? <laughs> how long until they can do that? You know, yeah. but I think that I, it's been so long since I really even thought about a long term hope for myself because I, mm. I am enjoying my career. Good news. She only needs 2024. Hope, yeah. hope for yeah, and I, I need, I see, and that's it. And this is great. It's amazing when I end my keynote lectures and we end the book on this. What is it you hope for? And Alyssa, so many people like you, they think of their children, they think of their loved ones. And I love that because it shows me there's still light and you have hope. But really, when we calm our busy brain and when we anchor and we brain shift, it's literally what do I hope for, for my brain, for my body, for my business, for my team? and anchor into that. And then we can do and show up as a dedicated mom as you are. So Mm -hmm. I think what resonates for me is, are you hoping for some quiet time at home where nobody needs you to be mom or a wife, but (laughs) you just get me time? Maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. I think even like, it's so funny that we're interviewing with you oh, now. She's very noncommittal, Dr. Romy. She's like, I, 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 can't, I cannot yeah, say. So I, I'm, I'm going to look forward to future podcasts when you both are talking about hope and what you hope for. I'm going to well, give we'll you mine. I update. feel like I have we'll one. We'll do an update. I, I, please do an update. Do your book. I'm, yeah. I'm just lost. We're gonna, I'm going to give you, you one. Go. I'm going to give you one, Dr. Romy, because Absolutely I feel can. like I, I, my hope is that is to have bigger impact, but to spend less time, like to have more time for me, but larger impact, right? Yes. So more people I'm going to hold show, that impact. Yes. More people learn, like that we're Come able to make community. a difference in the industry, but also yes. that doesn't mean I have to give up more of my time. It means and I so can it is. make it smaller. I am hoping and that you so regain is. your time and scale and create Beautiful. the amazing impact you are in the Hustle Humbly community. And so it is. I And when you reset the hope, uh, honestly, bring me back in. So Alyssa, I know what your hope is. And I'm going to check in on you, Katie, on how it's going. And you know, now when you do your word of the year, your vision board, you know that's a part of it. And that's mine. And maybe I'll be lucky in that when I come back and we check in with each other, I'll have an update on my dating life. Because right now it's just me and my dog, Raja. I feel like we're recording this a little bit out. I feel like by the time it airs, your person is already, like you've already found them. That's how (laughs) I feel. I feel like it has happened. Thank you for being my hope holder. And see, that's what happens when you brain shift as a community. It's rather than talking at each other of everything that's on my to-do list is what hope can I hold for you? Mm Mm-hmm. That's so. so sweet. Do you have a word of the year for I would love 2024? To, oh my gosh, she's I hearing know, it. We love it. We love it. <laughs> so good. What is your word, Dr. Romy? Do you already know your word? Girl, that's obvious. It's a brain shift. We are taking love the it. world by storm. Mm-hmm. I mean, this I book it. is coming out in multiple languages. It's in multiple countries negotiating even more. This is it. It is brain shift year. Yes. Dr. Remy is going to live to regret the fact that I have her cell phone number. I'm going to be like, <laughs> not at all. What's happening? <laughs> What's that happening? So yeah. Funny. Stop working in the sky club, Dr. Romy. Look around. There's men all around you. Yes. <laughs> so I feel funny. like Katie's been my my hope holder along the way. Oh, that's so and nice. Just, oh, oh. I know. One day I'll be out of the trenches and can really like. I know. I love because my kids are 11 and about to be 14. So oh, they're, yes. they are self-sufficient yes. and delightful. Yes. And, and it's 
the time when your kids are little feels yeah. so hard and so Absolutely. long. And then when you're Absolutely. on the other side of it, you're like, it's not that long. It's it not is. that long. You can yeah. do this. Like we want to cheer each other on. Al- Alyssa, you already are doing it. You're a spectacular mother, successful businesswoman. And I will start and with this hope and intention for you and let you grow it into your own hope that even if it's for three minutes, you find time that is just for you and your brain and your body and your spirit every day, whatever resonates for you. Just start with three minutes a day. Beautiful. I love that. That's wonderful. So beautiful. Okay. Dr. Romy, at the end of every episode, yes. I feel like you just toasted to us, but, I know. <laughs> but we do a toast where yes. um, our guest or we usually will cheers to someone who's impacted their life, helped their success, someone they're just proud of right now. D- did you bring a toast for us? Are you I prepared? I okay, am. great. Let's hear okay. it. I have my hydration water. Am I supposed to like hold up a toast or, or yeah, am okay, I right. supposed well, to do I'll, I'll, I'll cheers <laughs> you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right, cheers. <laughs> This toast is for all the teachers from preschool to high school in Danville, Illinois, who were a part of my journey of becoming a STEMinist and helping me launch this project into the world. And for any school teacher that's listening now, and you have no idea what impact you're making, that there's a little Romy sitting in your classroom right now. Cheers. That's Cheers amazing. to the teachers. I love that. And Dr. Romy, we have so many teachers that either are realtors on the side or that have come from yeah. being teachers to being realtors. So they will really appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the dedication in the front of my book is to all my teachers. I love that. So where yeah. can we get your book tomorrow? Yes. Tell us how to find it. It is you already what, what online and click and order. You can go to Amazon. You can go to Walmart. You can go to Target. You can go to Barnes and Nobles. You can buy the hard copy. You can get it on Audible if you like audiobook. I read my audiobook, including <gasps> all the voices of my Indian aunties. Then I'm um, going to have to audiobook Hold it. up. I, I want to tell you, Dr. Yes. Romy, I went to your Instagram to try yes. and make sure I had your pronunciation right of your name. And the the link that the one that I found yes. that did it was you doing the the like the actual title of your book. Yes. And you were so beyond excited. And I was like, <laughs> oh, we're going to love her. Because you were like, I can't believe I'm doing this because it is your first book. And I really felt like, it you is. know, you were yeah. celebrating that moment and you were being like giddy about it. And I love that you didn't take it so seriously, but you were like, oh, like I'm it doing was, this. It was like a little fourth grade Romeo and me squealing. I And I, well, your listeners didn't hear the rest of it, but it was more exciting to me to do that than like see a dream wedding dress. It maybe tells you why I'm single right now. Right, right. We, That's okay. You can have both. You can have both. Yeah, yeah we both. can have both. Thank um, you. I love that. Okay, so you're going to give us a specific link, though, so everyone can go take yeah. the test. We're okay, great. You, we'll they put can that take in the, the show busy notes. Brain test. Yep. You take we the busy brain test. We all want to take mm-hmm. the test, and then we'll mm-hmm. all compare our yeah. busy brains. We'll do that in the community group. I think that'll be oh, so yes. great. Mm-hmm. It'll be okay. so great. Okay, Dr. Remy, before I'm going to say goodbye, like, thank you for being here. Goodbye, but don't hang up with me, okay? Will you stay? Katie wants to talk to you forever. Absolutely. I'll keep you forever. No, no. Um, we're, goodbye. Thank you for being here. We're what so appreciative show. of your time. Thank you so much. Um, we can't read, wait to read the book. I know. I'm really uh, excited about mm-hmm. it. Holding <laughs> hope for the both of you and your entire community that 2024 is you just take one brain shift and you're going to make it the best year ever for your brain, your body, and your business. Perfect. That's a great ending. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hustle Humbly podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to ratethispodcast.com slash hustle humbly and leave us a review or like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. If you have an episode topic or someone you'd like to toast on the show, please email us at team at hustle humbly podcast.com. Find us on social media at hustle humbly podcast. Don't forget to find all the free resources at hustle humbly podcast.com slash resources. See you next week.